afternoon. A little uh, ride out to Chester today. Just coming to see Liam Williams, who I've visited on multiple occasions for different reasons, different features, different things that he's helped me out with. He's always up for a visit. I've put a video of his mowers on YouTube before. So anyway, I was talking to Liam the other day and he said he's got a block of land to plough and they've just bought a new Kuhn Verimaster 153. Um, it's auto reset, hydraulic auto reset, um, very width. And they're ploughing down here. It's quite heavy land. Um, Cheshire's and this part of the world, Cheshire bordering North Wales, massive variation in the soil type. You could be in really light sandy soil or you could be in like really heavy cloddy soil. This is at the heavier end of that scale and you can tell, you can tell it's turning over quite big. Uh, as Liam says, it's, it's short of some box muck, which it is. It's getting some today though. There is a tractor and muck spreader working as well from a different contractor. So I'm just going to bang up some footage of, of this working, really. The muck spreading outfit was from Philip Moore, who's uh, another contractor in Chester. It's a uh, Bunning Lowland 15 with a slurry door, as you can see. Um, tractor up front, New Holland T7210. Not an auto command tractor, but uh, fresh tractor with uh, black rims which look pretty smart I think. Liam is driving a 7R 350 which was not a year old yet. It's just done 1,500 hours. Um, he's ploughing on 20 inch furrow width. So the very master's at full width. Um, he's got 710 tyres on the back. So it all's fitting in nicely. It's, it's, uh, it's nice and even finished to the ploughing, even though the, it, is, um, it is quite heavy. Horses heads. As some people might say, just have a quick look. Yeah, it's it's quite it's quite clay. I've I've worked on farms just up the road from here back in the day when I used to get my hands dirty. Well, try to. Um, and if if you time it wrong and it's ploughed just for a little bit too long and you come to work it down, it's it's not fun. It's like working down bricks. Um, so yeah, hopefully Liam's going to come back and he's got a flat lift subsoiler but it's got a set of discs in it as well. So the plan is that he's going to come back in a day or two, flat lift and disc and then hopefully to prepare the seed bed for maize it's just going to be quite a straightforward, just a, a pass with a power harrow, hopefully. That's the plan anyway. So. We'll put a few cameras around and get some footage. We've just got a nice bit of footage of Liam ploughing with the 7R350 and the Kuhn 153 Verimaster. And the thing I've just noticed with a couple of the clips is is the 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 way the tractors take off as they if they start off in each furrow. The 7R seems a lot more measured and smooth, whereas the 6R seems a bit more keen to get going, shall we say. So I've just put them the two clips one after the other. I thought it was quite interesting. 
but maybe that's just me. Just going across the field here, you can see that the, the field was tracked when they harvested the maize. So there's two fields beyond this one, and the trailers obviously stuck to one track as they came back across. But you can see Callum's having to s slow right down. It, it's obviously quite hard where it, where it's tracked. So you'd, you'd wonder whether it's better to spread those trailers out, put one track in, send them around the headland, you don't know which is the best option really it's difficult but you can see the effect of the compaction and how it spreads out from where the track is Just watching these machines from the sky you can see the lines of compaction uh, it turns up in the ploughing exactly where the wheel marks are from the equipment and the trailers that, had, that harvested the maize last autumn and looking at the field it wasn't exceptionally wet or anything but you can definitely see the effects of the compaction in this soil type. Just noticed it's quite interesting that when Callum turns, he pulls back into the furrow from the unploughed side. 
whereas Liam seems to do it the opposite way around. But the other thing I've noticed is that Callum's got quite a long headland on an angle to plough on this side of the field, whereas uh, and Liam's got one on, on his side as well, but he's marked, Liam's put a scratch mark in. Okay, so you can see Liam's attention to detail here. He's marked out the field or he marked out each headland. Uh, he does that by eye, he's not using sat-nav. I did ask him. Um, but as he approaches, he slows down. Each furrow hits the mark and he's just easing it out. He's got his top link on a slotted hole so he can just get that bit of latitude in the plough. So he's trying to minimise his ins and outs. You can look at the end of the headland actually and see that his ins and outs aren't very... There's not big V's in his ins and outs, so it's just a nice tidy job when he comes to do the headlands. I'm not laying any comparison on, on the Coon versus the Amazon plough, but looking at both of them working, obviously the the Coon is hydraulic auto reset. And as you're watching it going along, you can see the, the furrows coming up and down as obviously there's there's hard parts in the in the soil profile. Um but obviously the Amazon doesn't do that because it's a shear bolt plough. But you'd wonder whether it's gonna cause any steel fatigue in the in the long term as each strain and stress goes through that plough. Just a thought really. Looking at the tyres on the John Deere's, Liam's got Michelin's on his tractor, uh, Axio Bib, high horsepowers. Um, these can run at 0.8 bar. Liam I'd say he's probably around that, looking at the tyres, they've got four cleats on the ground, uh, definitely set for field pressures, not the road. Uh, the 6250R's got the Trelleborg TM900's, which are also the high horsepower tractor tyre, and I think can also run at 0.8 bar. I'd say these are uh, set at uh, whatever the PDI pressure was, looking at them there's quite a difference between the two profiles on the ground. You can see Callum coming up to these wheel marks, the track that was across the fields, um, holding water in places, it's just going through nice and steady, they're, they're really hard and compacted, It's you don't want to be breaking a shear bolt just for the sake of going a bit faster, um, the water will escape and it'll all work down nicely in the end, but you can definitely see that he's taking his time just to get through that nice and carefully. Looking at the skimmers on the Amazon plough here, just set nicely, just, just taking that top off and burying it under the main furrow. I've also noticed that you can just see the flex on the on the moldboard. I know you can when, you, when you're driving and when you're ploughing, but for people who are not maybe familiar with this type of uh, equipment, it, you can see the stresses and strains that's, that the heavy soil's putting on this machine. Okay, looking at the ploughs from behind, you can see there's a good bit of clearance on the Amazon plough and that's one of the things that uh, the, the Williams team like about the Amazon is that if you have got a lot of trash to bury, that is the plough to use. I haven't gone into in-depth uh, detail on the ploughs uh, mainly because the guys got knocked off They'd caught up with the muck spreader and the farmer had still a heap of manure to get rid of so he wanted to get it all on this land before it was ploughed. 
and uh, it was getting close to silage time so he didn't want to be putting it on any grass so uh, yeah the guys knocked off uh, pretty quick after after we finished filming the main work so that, that's why there's no uh, no GoPro footage from the 7R Enough of me talking, so it's time for some tractor footage. Um, as usual, comment, rate and subscribe. Any questions, ask away. If, if I can answer them, I will. If I can find out, I will. Um, hit the little bell if you want to keep seeing my content pop up in your uh, notifications. And uh, see you next time. Thank you.